Hello there, I'm Hector, and today we're going to be doing a pen review. Actually, I'm going to be doing a pen review. You'll be watching. Before we begin, I want to make a disclaimer. I find SBRE Brown's videos extremely helpful. They contain a lot of the information. They're humorous. They're concise, to the point. Love his videos. And to that end, I'm going to steal his format. There, I said it. I'm going to steal it. So, we'll get to the pen we'll be reviewing today. That pen is this. The Edison Collier. I guess that's how you say that. I'm not quite sure. I'll tell you about the pen, the parts of the pen. I'll tell you what I like about it. I'll tell you what I don't like about it. And then we'll do a writing sample. I told you I was going to steal this format. All right. Starting with the cap of the pen, you have the finial or the end. I'm not real sure on all the names of the parts of the pen. I just like using the pens, so we'll, we'll hit the names as we go along. Uh, then we have the rest of the cap. There's a clip. I don't use the clips. All my pens go in pen rolls. Don't use the clips. It's got a clip. The cap tapers down to the body. We have the body, which is the cigar shape. Uh, it tapers into the end, or what I like to call it, the butt. The butt of the pen. We unscrew the cap here. A word about that. These caps at least on this one, on the, on the Edison Collier, the cap fits extremely well. On some of the pens I own, the caps, even when they're screwed down all the way, they're, they're a little loose, they're a little, they have a little wiggle. But not on this Edison. This cap screws down so tight and so precisely. It's amazing. And that's all I've got to say about that. All right, unscrewing the cap here, we have the nib, which is awesome. Uh, this particular nib is a Richard Bender full flex, dual point, extra fine, extra, extra fine uh, nib. It writes extra fine this way, it writes extra, extra fine this way. And we'll, we'll cover that in the writing sample. Then you have the section, which has a little scallop or a little curve right there where, where I imagine normal people would grip it. I don't grip it there. Um, my fingers are big fat sausage fingers. <clears throat> I work outside for a utility company. A lot of times my hands are stiff. I I just can't grip it down there. It doesn't work for me. I usually wind up gripping pins further up on the body. And, and this one works for me. This is a pretty decent sized pen. Then you have the rest of the body. It tapers down to uh, the butt or the end. And we'll unscrew it here. The Collier is a cartridge converter filler or an eyedropper. If you you can fill this part up with ink, it would hold quite a lot of ink. Um, but I like the cartridge converter. It's a little less messy when you go to refill it. That also has extremely good threads on it. Um, and that's all there is to about that. Let's put this cap back on. Now a lot of times Reviewers will take very precise measurements and the weigh it, all that kind of stuff. The problem I have with all of those measurements and weights is they don't mean anything to me. I can't picture that in my head at all. It doesn't work, so I'm not going to do that. Instead, what I'm going to do is compare it to things we've all written with, or I hope we've all written with these. Here it is, 
next to a standard number two pencil. Here it is next to a Sharpie. I think we've all used Sharpies before. And if you look, it's quite a bit bigger than your standard size Sharpie. It's a pretty, pretty big pen. Here it is next to a Pilot Varsity. I think we've all used these. If not, they're very cheap. Go out and get one. They're awesome. My particular one is purple. Nothing wrong with that. I just like the purple one. And as you can see, it's, it's quite a bit bigger than a Varsity. Another pen that it's very close in size to is the Mont Blanc Meisterstuck 149. And if you look, the Edison is actually bigger. This is a bigger pen than the 149, which is great for me because like I said, I have big fat sausage fingers that don't work very good, perfect for me. So if you like bigger pens, this, this is a bigger pen. And one more pen. This is the exact same size as the Mont Blanc Meisterstück 149. This is a Jin Hao 159. And if you look, no Kenny, no. If you look, it's about the same size as uh, the 149. And it's, like I said, it's bigger. The, the Edison is bigger. So that's a good pen to compare it to. That pen I think is like $12 from the Goulet's. So if you don't have that pen, I highly recommend it. $12 pen, it's a very nice pen. All right, I think that's about it. Let's do a writing sample. All right, let's do a writing sample with the Edison Collier with the Richard Binder Dual Point Extra Fine, Extra Extra Fine Full Flex Nib. That's a lot to say, but it is a cool nib. The first thing I like to do is print because I notice a lot of times your pen may work good when using it for cursive, but if you're trying to use it to print, you'll, you'll notice maybe sometimes it will start hard or have flow issues. The quick brown fox jumps. And I print a lot at work, so I like to print to make sure it's not, you know, it's gonna, there's no hard starting or you can't cross a T or some goofy thing like that jumps over stuff. All right, and we'll flip it over and we'll use the dual point extra extra fine nib. The quick brown fox. over stuff. Now this extra extra fine nib is extremely smooth. It's almost smoother than the normal side. It's a very very smooth extra extra fine nib. It's awesome. Okay, let's do some cursive writing. I'm just gonna write at a normal pace. with a normal pressure. The quick brown fox jumps over stuff. He jumps over stuff. 
All right, let's do some quick writing here. Quick brown fox jumps over the stuff. Now, even though I wrote this really quick, you'll notice it's really wet. This is an extremely wet writing pen, which I love. I love that about this pen. I do not like dry writing pens. All right, since this is a flex pen, let's do some flex writing. The quick. Now I'm just using, um, I would say, a normal amount of pressure to do this. I don't want to really want to flex this to the max because these nibs are not what I would consider cheap. I don't want to over over flex it and spring it, but that's still providing a very really good amount of uh, line variation. The quick brown fox. Trumps. Over. Stuff. Okay. Now I like to draw bird flourishes. Surprise, I know some of you are shocked to hear that. And this pen's really good at it, so let's draw a bird flourish. Put them way over here. I like this pen for this. I'm going to flood the nib a minute because this is going to take a lot of ink, and we just did all that flex writing. Like I was saying, this pen is really good at this because of the amount of line variation between thick and thin. It really makes those wings pop. Let's move this a minute. Beak here. Set up his tail feathers. All right. And we'll throw some flourish tail feathers in here. I think you can see that. I really do love this pen for this because of the variation you get between the thick feathers and then these extra extra fine feathers. It really does an amazing job. That being said, one thing I don't like this pen or this nib for is oh my, correspondence. Because I, for those of you that have used vintage nibs, they're, they're quite springy. They're quite bouncy. And as you write with them, they will, you'll get a rhythm and they'll bounce along and they're just a lot of fun to use. This nib is not like that. It doesn't, it's not springy. It doesn't spring back. That being said, this is an awesome nib. It's just an incredible nib. I love it a lot. Um, I highly recommend both this nib and this pen. 
I hope this video has been informative and helpful. I don't see a lot of reviews on either the Collier, there are some, or this Richard Binder nib. I, I don't think I've seen any reviews on this particular nib, this dual point full flex nib. And it, it really is an amazing nib. Um, I wish someone would have reviewed this before I bought it because I would have bought it quicker. It really is that awesome. So I hope this has been useful for you if you're shopping for a flex nib. I highly recommend the Richard Binder nib. And uh, we'll see you later. Thank you.